So hello everyone. Um, today uh, today's speaker is Leonardo. He's a, a new postdoc in here in Morelia, and he's going to be working with Angeles Perez. You might remember her and me. Angeles is now in Ensenada. Um, anyway, Leo got his undergraduate degree from University of Nariño and then his PhD in 2019 at Inaoe, where he worked with Panos Patsis and Ivanio Porari. Uh, his thesis was on stellar orbital dynamics of these galaxies. And he then uh, moved on to work back as a fellow in University of Nariño. His research lines are stellar orbital dynamics, galactic dynamics, dynamical system, chaos, uh, celestial mechanics, etc. And today's talk is going to be stellar orbital dynamics in steady galactic potential. Go ahead, Leo. Okay, thank you, Gilberto, for the introduction. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to present an overview about my work in stellar orbital dynamics in steady galactic potentials especially in these galaxies that are composed by bars or spiral arms. I introduce here my collaborators during this process from my PhD to the postdoctoral research. So firstly, I'm going to give a brief introduction about dynamics in bar potentials and spiral arm potentials. Then I'm going to talk about the role of sticky chaotic orbits in building galactic bars. Then I'm going to present a work about the three building blocks of spiral arm structures and the building blocks of the galactic bar with the grab pot potential. And finally, I will present my main conclusions. So introduction, uh, the galactic structures are mainly built by stellar orbits. So the features that we see in, in these galaxies like bar and spiral arms, uh, the main building blocks are the orbits of the stars. The circular velocity with which a non axisymmetric structure rotates or the pattern speed is by far the most important dynamical parameter because it determines the location of the corrotation and the resonances in the model. Uh, in order to model galaxies, uh, we use the formalins for autonomous Hamiltonian systems. In this kind of systems, the, the numerical value of the Hamiltonian is conserved and is called the constant of Jacobi or, or the energy of Jacobi. Uh, in, this, in this case, this kind of system allows to study a fundamental dynamical state and more complicated dynamical phenomena can be described as variation of this fundamental state. Uh, as the orbits of the star are the building blocks of galactic models, the periodic orbits are the skeleton of this of these potentials. So about bars, the main family or the X1 family uh, has members who, whose shapes are elongated along the semi-major axis of the bar. In the left panel, I show four members of the X1 family in the case of a bar potential. These are planar families. When there is a change of stability, the vertical stability from instability in the model, uh, this change introduce a new kind of three-dimensional periodic orbits or the so-called X1 tree. On the right panel, I show a member of the X1 tree. This is the X1 V1 family. This family bifurcates uh, the fur, uh, at the inner limb and resonance, resonance in, the, in the model. Uh, the standard model for the construction of bars says that a stable periodic orbits of the X1 family 
eh, traps, trap, eh, quasi periodic orbits around, around them, and these stable orbits build the galactic, the galactic bar. In the case of spiral arms, the X1, the X1 family presses enhancing the imposed spirals. The, the precession pattern is given to the morphology, to the geometry of the spiral arms. So in this case, the members of the X1 family process with a given pattern, enhancing the spiral arms up to the 4-1 resonance. Uh, at this region, uh, the orbits start getting a square character and they don't support the spiral arms anymore. So in this work, we, we study the role of sticky chaotic orbits uh, in constructing galactic bars. So what kind of orbits form the, the box internal structure of bars that we see in observations? Even the Milky Way's bar is considered as a boxy structure. So in order to find the orbits that build these, these structures, we have to look for deviation for the standard model. So can these sticky chaotic orbits construct these this boxy morphologies? So in this work, we consider three snapshots of an embodied simulation from Manos and Machado. Here we see four snapshots. Uh, we consider just the three last snapshots at 4.2 giga years, seven giga years, and 10 giga years. Uh, the interaction between the dark matter halo and the disk generates a boxy bar surrounded by a ring. The dynamical and geometrical parameters for, for the disk, for the bar, and for the halo were obtained in the paper of Manos and Machado. We can see here clearly a boxy bar and a ring that surrounds the, the structure. So to model the snapshots, we consider for the bar a Ferrer's potential, which, which is a semi-analytical potential given by this expression. To model the disk, we consider a Miyamoto Nagai disk with scale parameters uh, obtained by Manos and Machado. And the halo uh, was modeled by a Degnem potential. In this table, uh, we see the geometrical and dynamical parameters for, for the model for the four models for the four snapshots. And we compute the corrotation radius over the semi-major axis of the bar in all cases. And they classify, uh, the bars classify as a slow rotators. This has some implication, some implications in the, in the dynamics of the, of the, of the models. So as I said before, we, we adopt the formalins for autonomous Hamiltonian system. So the bar rotates with a constant pattern speed around the vertical axis. In this case, in the system, that are, in the non-inertial non system that, are, that rotates with the bar, the Hamiltonian is given by this expression where peaks PY and PC the momenta uh, phi the potential, omega the pattern speed of the bar, which is constant. Uh, uh, the potential is also conservative. And x, y, and zeta, the coordinates in the non-inertial system. The numerical value of the Hamiltonian is conserved and is the, the energy of Jacobi. By using the canonical Hamiltonian equations, we derive the equations of motion. We have six equations of, of first order, non-linear non -linear and coupled. So to study the degree of chaoticity of the, of the orbits, we implemented the Galli-2 index. The Galli-2 index is defined as the, the absolute value of the wage product 
of two deviation vectors. These deviation vectors evolve according to the variational equations, which are coupled to the equations of motion. So in general, we have to integrate 18 equations of motion. And the galley uh, determines if, our, if a given orbit is regular or chaotic, and also quantifies the degree of, of chaoticity of the orbit. So for- I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. What's the wedge product? It's, it's an extension to the cross product to 20 dimensions. In this case, to six dimensions. So it measures the, the, the linear dependence of, the, of, two, of two vectors or more vectors. Okay, thanks. So for chaotic orbits, the Galito index falls to, follows this exponential law where lambda one and lambda two are the first two Lyapunov characteristic exponents. Um, for regular orbits is constant uh, around a positive value. So it's a good tool to determine if an orbit is regular, sticky or chaotic. So in order to determine the degree of chaoticity of the orbits, we constructed this kind, these diagrams. Let me explain here what is here. So basically this is a, a diagram for initial conditions uh, for planar orbits. So we have in the, in the horizontal axis, the energy of Jacobi for the orbits and in the y-axis, the intersection of the orbit with the, with the vertical position. So we launch particles from the vertical with positive velocity. Uh, yes, from, with positive velocity uh, for, okay. So the zero velocity curve determines where the motion is allowed. So uh, the motion is allowed is just uh, in this region where, where we have the Dix-1 family, which is given in, in black color. In this case, as the, as the system rotates slow, slowly, we have a transition from the X-1 orbits to the X-2 family. So the color bar indicates here the, the, log, the, the log of the Galito index. So for the white regions uh, are uh, regular regions and the blue regions are chaotic regions. So if we look for sticky orbits, we have to look in the border lines between order and chaos in the transition region between order and, and chaos in, this, in these regions. So to, to visualize the phase space of the system at these energies, I show you here a point card surface of section for the first snapshot at this energy of Jacobi. So what we have here is the point card map in general at this energy. Uh, the invariant curves that we see here uh, correspond to quasi-periodic orbits of the X1 family. So the, the X1 member at this energy is stable. So around, around this, this X1 member, we encounter stability curves. So if we perturb the X1 orbit, the periodic orbit, we find a quasi-periodic orbit. If we perturb this orbit more, we have a quasi-periodic orbit. But if we go beyond the, the stability islands, we enter in a sticky region. A member of the sticky region is given by the blue, the blue point. So this is an orbit that is confined between the, sta the, the stable region and the full chaotic region. It's an orbit that can generate a structure. It doesn't diffuse in the whole phase space. On the other hand, the points in, 
in, in heavy black dots correspond to an orbit that diffuses in the phase space. So I'm going to show in the next figure which orbits correspond to the six asterisks that we see here in, in red. So remember that the first asterisk correspond to a quasi-periodic orbit. The second correspond to the quasi-periodic orbit or of the last CAM curve. The third correspond to a sticky orbit. This correspond to, let me show you in the next figure. So we have here in column A, the, these six orbits integrated for one giga year and the column B integrated for 10 giga years. And in column C, column C, the evolution of the Galli 2 index. So the, in the first row, we have a quasi-periodic orbit of the X1 family. And we see that the Galli behaves constant around a positive value in the whole integration. So this is classified as a regular orbit. The second orbit is also a regular orbit. But the third one is the orbit corresponding to the blue points. So it's a sticky orbit. We see here a boxy character, uh, like we, we see in the snapshot of the simulation. And this orbit behaves irregular for long times. The scale of time is mega years in log. And then it gets chaotic uh, in the end of the integration. So this is classified as a sticky orbit, but it can generate a structure for long times. The, in the fourth row, we, we see the orbit that keeps the morphology, the boxy morphology for one giga year, but finally it dissipates in the, in the phase space. Uh, this is an example of a Bressel orbit. And the last, orbit correspond to a full chaotic orbit, an, an orbit that gets chaotic uh, early in the simulation. So it doesn't generate any, any boxy bar or any galactic structure. So in the three models, we found this kind of boxy orbits in the border lines between order and chaos for a large range in, in the energy of, of Jacobi. So the Galli index indicates also that these orbits uh, classify as sticky orbits. So we perturb the orbits in the vertical direction in order to find uh, three-dimensional boxes. So we always found uh, a range in the perturbation where the boxiness is, is conserved. Here it shows some, some examples for the, for the three models. So we were able to, to find orbits that can reproduce the snapshots. Uh, and these orbits are beyond the standard model. These orbits are, are, are somehow associated to the X1 family, but they don't classify as X1 orbits at all. They are sticky orbits in the border lines from order to chaos, and they are classified as sticky orbits and they can keep the boxy morphology for reasonable times of the integration. So remember that the snapshot, uh, it was composed by a boxy structure surrounded by a ring structure. So we found the boxy orbits, the sticky orbits, and by the characteristic of the, of the models as they are slow rotators, uh, this, generates a kind of ring structures that are associated with the boxy structures. So we propose that this kind of orbits, this kind of sticky orbits can reproduce uh, some observations and some simulations seen in Embari in in codes. So as regards the, the spiral arms, in this work, we compute the three-dimensional building blocks for massive spiral arms. Uh, in the case of the three components. So in order to achieve the goals of this, of this, of this work, 
we use the perlas potential. The, per the perlas potential has the advantage that it is modeled by massive spiral arms. It is composed by, by Smith spheroids. So we can assign a mass to the spiral arms. And we consider the case of SC type galaxies for open spiral arm, by symmetric spiral arms. So in this table, uh, I showed the parameters to model SC spiral arms. And one important parameter is the mass of the spirals over the mass of the disk, which gives the perturbation of the, of the non-axisymmetric structures. So we consider the case when the perturbation is, when the mass of the spirals is 1% the mass of the disk, up to 10% the mass of the disk. We, we studied this, this range. So again, for the axisymmetric potential, we model the Bolsh with a Miyamoto Nagai sphere and the disk by a Miyamoto Nagai disk and the halo by, by Annalyn and Santillan. All the parameters are suitable to model SC galaxies. So I show here uh, effective potentials of the model in the case of 4% mass of the spirals of the mass of the disk and the case B for 10% the mass of the spirals over the mass of the disk. Uh, we see here the imposed spirals, the location of the spiral arms, which go from the inner limbran resonance up to 1.2 times the corrotation radius. We wanted to see the influence of the ray of the spiral arms beyond corrotation. And we see here the Lagrangian points, the four Lagrangian points. Uh, the defective potential is distorted because of the symmetry, the geometry of the, of the spiral arms. So again, we adopted the formalins for Hamiltonian autonomous autonomous systems, the, the system conserves the energy of Jacobi. The building blocks, I mean the, the periodic orbits, were computed by using a newton raphson iterative algorithm. And in order to study the stability of the, of the orbits, we use the formalins for variational equations. The variational equations the variational vectors are given by C in Greek letters. Uh, these vectors uh, ha have components that are a small deviation to the initial conditions. So the, the zero vector, the initial vector uh, is related with the final vector according to the monodromy matrix. We measure, uh, we launch a a particle, and when it crosses again the Poincaré surface of sections, we compute the, the stability of the orbit. So the characteristic equation of the monodromy matrix is given by this expression, which solutions obey, uh, obey these conditions. And we, we have four types of stability in the case of periodic orbits, depending on the values of the delta parameter and the stability indices. So for stable orbits, delta is greater than zero and the two vertical indices lie inside minus two and two. In this case, the four engine values of the monodromy matrix lie in, a united, in the unit circle. For simple and stable orbits, uh, delta is greater than zero, and one of the indices uh, lie outside of the of minus two and two. In this case, the two eigenvalues are on the, on the x-axis and two are on the unit circle. For double and stable orbits, delta is is greater, greater than zero and the, two, and, and the two stability indices lie beyond minus two and two. And for complex and stable orbit, orbits, delta is less than zero 
and the four eigenvalues are complex numbers, but but of of the unit circle. So for periodic orbits in any kind of dynamical conservative system, we have uh, these four types of of stabilities. So we found the periodic orbits in the case of three-dimensional spiral arms. In these characteristic curves, here I show the, the evolution of the X1 family in, in black. Uh, and we have the bifurcations of, of new three-dimensional families. This is for this is the cases that I show for the strength of the perturbation. This line in red is the locates the foreground resonance and the Lagrangian point. So these are stability cures for for model when the mass of the spiral is four points per percent the mass of the disk, and when the mass of the spiral is 7% the mass of the disk. We, we see here the, the evolution of the two stability indices uh, as function of the energy of, of Jacobi. So big one is the radial stability index and B2 is the vertical stability index. When there is a transition from this region for the vertical indices, when B2 crosses minus two, a new family of, of periodic orbits uh, bifurcates from, from the ma main family. This first bi bifurcation uh, occurs in the, in the inner Lindbergh resonance. So this is the first, first three-dimensional family, is the X1, B1 family. At the second transition, a new three-dimensional family bifurcates. This is the X1 B3 family, uh, and the other, and the other transition, a new family by four gates, and so on, uh, uh, up to the four one resonance. So this is what we obtain in this case. This is a superposition of of periodic orbits corresponding to the X1 family and its by four three dimensional bifurcations. So the circle in magenta defines the inner Lindbergh resonance. The circle in blue defines the foreground resonance and the outer circle in, in black color defines the corrotation radius. So we see here that the superposition of periodic orbits, the three-dimensional um, and the planar family X1 enhance the spirals from the inner Lindbergh resonance up to the foreground resonance. In the, in, we, we studied all the cases between 1% of the perturbation up to 10% of the perturbation. These are just some examples of or models. So in counter, uh, ah, we see here that beyond the foreground resonance, the orbits don't support the spiral anymore. So we found the same, the same, the same result for that Contopolis, but in this case for three-dimensional spiral arms. But these periodic orbits are just mathematical objects. They don't exist, exist in real galaxies, not even in simulations. So we study the role of quasi-periodic orbits. These are orbits that are trapped around periodic orbits. So here I show a point card surface of section for, for model four. In this case, we see a member of the X1 family, which is the periodic orbit uh, in the A case. And we have quasi-periodic orbits around the periodic orbit. So we perturb the orbits in the radial direction and in the vertical direction. And we see what, what is the support of the, of the quasi-periodic orbits. So on the the first row, we see here the superposition of quasi-periodic orbits. Uh, um, from left to right, we increase the degree of the perturbation. We see that when we enter in the chaotic sea, the spirals are not supported anymore by, 
because of chaos. These orbits don't support the spirals anymore. The same case for, for vertical perturbation in the second row. We see that here that the spiral arms are not supported by chaotic orbits. So this is a general case. Uh, we found, we, super, we, we, we have hit the superposition of many periodic, quasi-periodic periodic orbits. And we see, here, we see here the support of the spirals from the inner Lindbergh resonance up to the fourth one resonance. And in the right panel, we see the shown projection. Uh, the red isophora shows is a suitable isophora, isophora for for SC galaxies, and we see here that the that our pattern uh, doesn't exceed the 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 thickness for spiral galaxies for SC spiral galaxies. So the best relation between the imposed spirals and the orbits lies in in this interval. So we launch a response model, 10 million particles under the influence of the spiral arms. I will see a structure like this, a spiral arms well-defined between the inner Lindbergh resonance and the four one resonance. But we encounter kind of a local extensions of the spiral arms between the four one resonance and corrotation. So in order to identify the orbits that build these extensions, uh, we compute Poincare surface of section at these regions. And we find, we find uh, tiny islands of stability uh, surrounded by chaotic sea. So we compute the orbits in these islands of stability. And and we found that they can support the spiral arms between the four one resonance and corrotation. And these orbits uh, don't, belong, don't belong to the X1 family or the X1 tree. This is a, these are a new kind of, of orbits that, 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 that can give support to the spiral arms be, be, uh, between four one and corrotation. Uh, in this work that was accepted in this year, we study the role of orbits in the neighborhood of complex and stable periodic orbits. So in the left panel, I show some examples of orbits around a complex and stable periodic orbits. And we, we found that these orbits can support for reasonable amount of, uh, amount of time, the, the spirals. These orbits are classified as sticky orbits. So the, uh, we study the role of, of this kind of orbits in supporting the spiral arms. So in this other work, uh, we, we study the building blocks for the galactic bar with the graph pot potential. So the galaxy model is the graph pot potential uh, created by Fernandez Trincado. This potential tries to, to reproduce the main dynamical characteristics of the Milky Way galaxy. It is composed by 17 disks, interstellar medium plus an optic disk, plus a stellar halo, plus a dark halo, uh, plus a boxy bar component. The parameters for the bar were considered as regards the, the last observations of the Milky Way galaxy. We consider a pattern speed of 41 kilometers per second per kiloparsec. So this is the galactic model. So we launched 10 million particles, uh, which were evolved initially under the influence of the axisymmetric potential, including a spherical central bulge. So the boxy bar component was introduced adiabatic, adiabatically for two giga years. And after two giga years, the mass of the bulge was, has been passed to the bar. So at this time, it, it conserves the mass and the system is autonomous. So it keeps the, 
it conserves the, the energy of Jacobi. Then we integrate the orbits for two giga years more in order to develop a spectral analysis. So again, we adopted the formalism for autonomous Hamiltonian systems. Um, for the orbital classification, we perform a spectral analysis that is a Fourier transform to the to the coordinates of the of the orbits. We we found we found the the frequencies of the orbits, uh, and the spectral analysis was applied to orbits that lie in this region. Uh, this is close the encloses the 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 galactic bar. So orbits uh, were considered as bar buildings if they have the if the fre the radial frequency over the uh, horizontal frequency lies in this range. And the morphological structure on the shown profile is given by this coefficient, uh, where f zeta is the vertical frequency of the of the orbits. So we found uh, three, three million, million particles that have this condition. And in this histogram, uh, I show the, the coefficient f zeta over fx and the number of particles uh, for, for the orbits. So we found here in the a peak, a small peak in the left, on the left side. And these orbits correspond to, to members of the X2 family. So we do not, we don't consider this orbit, this, this orbit for further analysis. The rest of the orbits were considered and we constructed the orbits found, uh, built this kind of bar structure. So we see here in the XY projection, elliptical bar uh, in the edge shown uh, view, a peanut structure, a clear peanut structure. And this is the projection on the Y zeta view. So we divided the range, the, this parameter in windows, in windows to classify the orbits given by these divisions. And each window uh, reproduce this kind of density maps. So we see here that orbits with, with, with the smaller coefficients construct boxy projections in the Edson view and orbits with larger values of the coefficient construct planar structures. So these are examples of orbits belonging to windows ABC. These orbits belong to the X1, big one family. And orbits corresponding to windows D, E, F, G, H, I uh, are mainly composed by quasi-periodic orbits of the X1 family uh, perturbed in the vertical direction. Uh, for windows J, K, L, the orbits are, are almost planar. Um, for the window L, uh, most of the member, members correspond to, to the X1, B4 family. So finally, we construct this color map we see here to, to see the contribution, the individual contribution of the, of the family of, of orbits to the pin of the structure. And we see here that the distribution is not, not, not random, but it form uh, structures. Uh, for instance, the window E where the peak, peak of the histogram is, is given, uh, construct uh, X structure uh, in this view. And as we go from right, uh, left to right, we found that the orbits get more planar contributions. This is on ongoing work. We, 
we pretend to send to to Astrophysical Journal in the next month. So in conclusion, in the case of ours, in our models, we find a class of 2D and 3D sticky chaotic orbits that construct boxy structures. These orbits can survive for several giga years. The 2D non-periodic orbits are found on the undermost invariant curves of X1 on the Poincare surface of section or in the intermediate neighborhood of the stability islands. By perturbing the 2D boxy orbits in the vertical direction, we find 3D boxy morphologies. In the case of a slow rotation or 3D sticky orbits can build boxy bars. The slow rotation of the model fa favors the appearance of a ring bar morphology. In the case of spiral arms, we have used the perlas Perla's potential to investigate the 3D building blocks of spiral arms in the case of EC Galaxy. The model study, study lie in this range. A sticky pattern is supported by, by orbits associated with the stable vertical bifurcation of X1 at N1 resonances within greater or equal than three. And the thickness of the spiral is about 0.6 kiloparsecs. The best relation between the imposed spirals and the orbits is for this range of the perturbation. Uh, we found local enhancements of spiral arms between for one and record rotation. Such enhancements are not as associated with the X1 tree. In the case, in the case of the Milky Way, the orbit selected by this criteria, the peak density maps with ellipsoidal character on the face on projection and a peanut shape on the its own projection. Orbits of low radium, the peak morphologies that resemble the X1, X1B1 family. The density maps constructed by these orbits show boxy shapes with bumps at their corners. These maps achieve the largest, largest extensions on the vertical direction. Orbits with very high radium are mainly composed by quasi-periodic orbits of the X1 family with excursions on the vertical component. From D2I, the maps achieve larger extensions on the phase on projection and less excursions on the vertical when the edge on projection is seen. The maps corresponding to the highest radio are mainly co constructed by X1B4 orbits. And the B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I type of orbits define a kind of boxy structures where the ends of B and C type from the typical bombs of the peanut shape. The main contributors to the internal extraction is mainly due to D, E, and e, F type of orbits, where the peak of the distribution takes place. The orbits I, J, and L types contribute mainly at almost planar regions with no contribution at internal regions. So thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. So let's see some uh, raised hands for questions. Oh, Gilberto, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a very nice talk, Leo. Thank you. I, I think I finally understood some of the things you've done. Um, I have a couple of questions. In your page 31, yeah, it it seems to me that in the lower left corner and the upper right corner of the orbits, they, they, they kind of want to form a second pair of arms. Is, is this, would you agree with that or am I imagining things? Let me check. The, in in your, your, your right figure, in your right figure. Ah, yeah. The lower left and upper right. Like the, the your, your orbits are squarish. So the, the two square, the two corners with the bumps, those follow the spiral and it follows very nicely. But in the other two squares, maybe I'm imagining, but it seems to me that it's trying to form another spiral. Okay. Would but, you agree with that or I'm reading too much on it? 
Ya, yeah, but the... What we see here is that the, the superposition of the, of the orbits are most, mostly, the density is bigger and in, to enhance the, the spiral arms. Mm -hmm. But I don't see too much enhancement in these other corners. Okay. And may I ask my other my other question or just yes, uh, in your page 44 near, near the end. That's a very nice plot. Uh, if you could, could could you calculate or reconstruct the distribution function from observations of a given bar based from on this plot? From observations? Yes, if, if we believe the observations of the galactic bar, for example, would, you, is, would it be possible to reconstruct the distribution function from this superposition of orbits? Or is not is something not feasible? For instance, for from observation, we can extract the the galactic potential. Right. So in order to obtain the orbits, we need a, a potential, a distribution of mass. Mm -hmm. So there are studies that show that it is possible for some kind of galaxies, for some conditions, to the 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 photometry gives the information about about the distribution of mass of of a given galaxy and with 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 techniques with Fourier transform we can obtain uh, information about the the galactic potential and in this case we can obtain uh, the orbits the orbits and re, um, reproduce the 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 bar or the or the orbits that build the, the bar. Right, but, but you still, please go ahead, please. So in that way, I can, I can say, yes, we can reproduce this kind of, of diagram for a real galaxy. Also this, the, the parameters for this, for this potential are obtained from observations. This is the graph pot potential, which follows the, the main dynamical characteristics of the Milky Way galaxy. So mm -hmm. in, in this case, we found a kind of boxy pin on the structure that is, let's say, um, it's according with the, with the observations of the Milky Way. OK, thanks. Thanks, Gilbert. So uh, do we have <clears throat> any other questions? No? Oh, well, if not, uh, let's thank Leo again. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good afternoon.